What's going on guys, Bob Roach from RoachTechnology.com here with yet another quick hack and touch tip for you. This video is going to be pretty short as there's not too much to talk about, but this is a question that I get pretty commonly and is that when I'm building my hack and touch, should I use a Sandy Bridge or an Ivy Bridge processor? Now a couple months ago, I would have said definitely wait for Ivy Bridge and stick with Sandy Bridge, but nowadays with the release of Mountain Lion and Apple just releasing new hardware such as the Retina MacBook Pro, which by the way does run an Ivy Bridge CPU, it is now safe to go with an Ivy Bridge CPU and actually I recommend it. So before I get into my very brief list of pros and cons, I just want to go ahead and mention just a couple of the key differences between the two different kinds of CPUs. So I'll go ahead and start off with the 2700K. This is a Sandy Bridge processor. Very, very highly recommended. This is probably one of the most common high performance CPUs used when building a Hackintosh. And just some things to keep in note. First off, the price, $309. Uh, very typical, just above $300 price range for you know a quad core with hyper threading up to eight threads. A uh, very, very stable processor. As you can see here, 3.5 gigahertz. Now, one of the big differences here is that this packs the Intel HD 3000. So real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and come over here. Now, this is a new Ivy Bridge. This is a i7 3770K Ivy Bridge, also 3.5 gigahertz. And as you can see over here, it's about $30 more expensive. But probably one of the biggest things with these new CPUs is the Intel HD 4000 graphics. Now, the difference between the 3000 and the 4000 graphics is huge. There's a definite performance boost with the 4000. And even a lot of games, maybe not like high end at ultra settings, but many games will run smooth on the Intel HD 4000 graphics. Also, many, many different monitor configurations are present, even with just using the onboard graphics. A lot of motherboards nowadays are coming standard with HDMI, DisplayPort, and multiple DVI connections as well. So the onboard 4000 series graphics are very capable, and in some cases, spending this extra $30 will really save you the hassle of having to go out and buy a dedicated GPU. For people that don't do too much intense gaming, maybe just want to do some light video editing on a single display, the Intel HD 4000 graphics really will come through for you and really, like I said, keep you from having to buy a dedicated GPU. Now that's probably the biggest difference of going with Ivy Bridge over a Sandy Bridge CPU. But also with Ivy Bridge, you get better power consumption, which is nice if you want to just do you know, a pretty like low budget computer, you don't want to have to go out and buy a huge power supply, things like that this will help keep your costs down. Now one reason I can think of you'd want to go with Sandy Bridge over Ivy Bridge is if you plan on doing a lot of overclocking. While the Ivy Bridge CPUs are definitely more than capable of overclocking, a lot of people have reported that the temperatures are actually a little bit higher when overclocking in Ivy Bridge. And that's probably just because that clock for clock, this is a little bit faster than this. This is also a different manufacturing process. So newer technology does put out more heat. And therefore, if you want to do a ton of overclocking, while the Ivy Bridge may end up being a little bit faster, your CPU will definitely be a little bit cooler if you go ahead and go with a Sandy Bridge CPU. Now I will say that using an Ivy Bridge CPU in conjunction with a Z77 chipset motherboard will definitely give you a great Hackintosh experience. On these new motherboards, you don't even need a DSDT when using the Ivy Bridge CPUs. Pretty much everything just works right out of the box. So on a fresh installation, you'll have almost everything working. So if you're looking to build, you know, a pretty high-end system, I would go with Ivy Bridge just because it's a newer technology, you're the most up-to-date that you can get. As Mountain Lion becomes more and more updated, Ivy Bridge support will increase and the overall Hackintosh experience will likely just improve as well. So really, I would only recommend going with Sandy Bridge, maybe if you're looking to save a couple hundred bucks. Uh, the Intel HD 4000 graphics are definitely a huge bonus here, especially if you're only paying another $30. But maybe your build, you plan on getting a dedicated GPU anyway. So really, there's no point of buying the HD 4000 graphics. And if you want to do some heavy overclocking in conjunction with your GPU, maybe to do some hardcore gaming, maybe on like a Windows partition or something, then you might actually want to end up going with a 2700K. It'll save you just a couple bucks and it'll probably keep your CPU a little bit cooler. So I hope this helps you guys try to distinguish whether to go with an Ivy Bridge or a Sandy Bridge CPU. Like I said, personally, I would be going with this Ivy Bridge right here. This is a definite beast of a processor. The HD 4000 graphics are definitely a win if you don't want a dedicated GPU. And overall, it's just the newer technology, the newer processor. That's what I'd want to have. So thank you guys very much for watching. Like I said, I hope this helps you decide on which processor to use in your build. Just simply make sure that your Socket 1155 motherboard can actually support Ivy Bridge. I believe most of them have updated their BIOS and whatnot to actually allow for it. But you'll definitely just want to do a quick Google search before you go ahead and use a Socket 1155 motherboard in conjunction with an Ivy Bridge CPU. So if you have any more questions, I'm at CPUKin on Twitter. Also be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com and at RoachTechnology on Twitter. If you feel like opening a 12 pack of awesome sauce, be sure to give this video a quick like. It really helps me out, and I'll see you guys in my next video.